don't you tell us uh, why do you choose a science career for yourself? Since I'm six, I'm, mm -hmm. all my free time is science. Okay. Probably more uh, mathematics and physics than chemistry, or the three together, let's say, the three okay. together. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's true that my family is completely crazy about food because we, are, we come from Alsace. Uh -huh. And Alsace, they are very, very good wine, probably the best wine of the world, uh -huh. the best food of the world. As and, they say. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, all my, my years, we had very, very good food. Mm -hmm. And in, in the, the 16th of March, the 1980, I was cooking a cheese souffle for my friends. And the recipe from Elle magazine was mm -hmm. saying you should add the yolks two by two. Okay? And because I did not understand why we should use for, you know, in my lab, it is written on the wall. It is forbidden to say you must or uh, <laughs> uh, one should. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I decided to put all the yolks together, and the, the souffle was a, a failure. And this is why the, the next Sunday, again with friends coming for dinner, mm -hmm. again for the cheese souffle, and I, I, I was using the same recipe. And I could see this sentence, add the yolk two by two, and I said, wow, this is perhaps the reason of the failure. So I decided to put the egg one by one. Instead and of two by two, OK. And, said, and the souffle was a, a success. OK. And this is why the, the 24th of March, 1980, I decided to take a, a notebook and to collect all these culinary uh, old wife tales, let's say. OK, yeah. And yes, now, yes. I, in my computer, I have more than 25,000 Uh, wow. Culinary old wife tales, okay. and since that time, I and in the, at that time I decided to, to test experimentally. Uh -huh. So, I, in, because I had a lab, I mm -hmm. could make the test. And so you already been working in, in science. You were this not is old. my life. Okay, I, I'm that's not a cook. I'm, okay. a, I'm a scientist. I'm a, I'm a physical chemist. Mm -hmm. I love mathematics. I love physics and chemistry. Uh, uh, I'm not a cook. No. I'm, Okay. I But cook you, very well. I cook very well because, <laughs> because Pierre, <laughs> Pierre, Pierre Gagnier, which is, yeah, who is probably is, the is. best chef of the world, yeah. is my intimate friend. I was, uh, okay. I was, uh, how do you say, le, le témoin, the, the, uh, I was uh, attending his wedding with his wife. So I was okay. uh, the guy. Okay. The, okay. I don't know the word. But uh, so Pierre is, is. You were his best man. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And Pierre is my intimate friend. For example, this morning I called Pierre because I, I need him. I, I need, you know, you have two school boys. We play together. Okay, that's good. <laughs> you still play together. That, that's very good. Yeah. So, how was uh, it uh, because of this uh, kind of uh, testing the recipes that mm. you get in touch with Nicolas Curti? Or that was before? How, how was that? In 1986, I met Nicolas Curti uh -huh. because someone told me that he was doing the same in England. Okay. He was not exactly doing the same, but we became... So I remember the call. I was, I was calling, hello, Professor Curti. You know, I'm in Paris. My name is Hervétis. I'm doing this kind of thing. Uh -huh. And I, Nicolas was answering, I'm coming to Paris next week. I want to see you. Okay. And he came to Paris. Uh -huh. We had a very good lunch together. Mm -hmm. with a poulot vin jaune, uh, which is a crazy dish, um, because yellow wine is a special wine from Jura with a special flavor of, of a small furadon called Sotolon. Uh, okay. But we became, we became friends and we decided to, to do everything together. So when I was making an experiment in Paris, mm -hmm. he was doing the, the, the same in Oxford. When he was doing in Oxford, I was doing the same in Paris. And after two years, we decided that we should create a new scientific discipline. Okay. And we proposed the name Molecular and Physical Gastronomy. Okay. I proposed Molecular Gastronomy. Nicolas added Unphysical. Okay. It was quite long. And when Nicolas died, I dropped the physical because it's enough. Mm -hmm. And very, very soon, the president of the Academy of Sciences asked me to have a PhD on this. Mm -hmm. uh, because we, uh, we organize international workshops and so on, so on, so on, so on. So, on. so for molecular gastronomy, how do you, can you define it? How, no, what is it? What is the discipline? The, the, it's very easy. When you cook, you do something. For example, imagine that you whip an egg white, it turns white and you get a foam. Yes. Okay. Making a foam, it's a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And science is studying the mechanism of phenomena. Okay. 
So if you want to study how an egg white is transformed into a whipped egg white, mm -hmm. you are doing molecular gastrolabo. Okay. You can apply to, to many different things because when you make a souffle, when you make asado, you, you know, asado, you have meat, it's red. You cook, it's brown. Why is it brown? Because of a chemical transformation and studying this chemical transformation is molecular gastrolabo. No, the definition is simple. Yeah, the definition is very simple, yes. And most people confuse molecular gastronomy with uh, molecular cooking. Oh, yes. Or molecular cuisine. Why oh, don't yes. you explain, please, Very for everybody to, to Very understand really the difference between those different terms? Okay. It's very simple. So I told you that molecular gastronomy is physical chemistry yes. for scientists, yes. not for chefs. Okay. Yes. No, no, I should tell you first. Okay. Cooking means producing food. It's, it's, a, it's a fact. Yes, it makes sense. Yeah. But what does mean gastronomy? Gastronomy does, mean, does not mean haute cuisine or a cuisine for rich people. It means knowledge. And this oh. is why I chose the name molecular gastronomy because it's not cooking, no, it's, it's the knowledge about cooking. Yes. So, this, so molecular gastronomy is for scientists. But the, the big issue is that in 1980, at the same time I was creating molecular gastronomy, I propose to use tools from chemistry labs in the kitchen. And using new tools in the kitchen, this is molecular cooking. Mm -hmm. So molecular cooking, here cooking means cooking. Yeah. cooking. So molecular cooking means making dishes for chefs. Even if they are beautiful dishes, it's always cooking. Molecular gastronomy means equations and science. Okay. Exactly. It's the study of the things that happen inside exactly. the food when exactly. you do. The chef don't want to produce knowledge, they want to produce food. Okay. The scientists don't want to produce food, they want to produce knowledge. So the two ways are completely separate. And this is why I'm saying, I'm not a chef, I'm not a chef. I cook very well, I don't care, <laughs> but I'm not a chef. My, okay. my, I, my job is not to cook for other people. It is for producing equations, making discoveries. Okay. And now there is a slight difference between molecular cooking and molecular cu cuisine. Mm -hmm. Molecular cooking is a technique. So you have, you, instead of whipping with a, a whisk, you use a siphon, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, a siphon is very convenient, it's modern, you make and you get the foam. Okay, this is molecular cooking. But if you have new tools, sometimes you can make a new art. Yeah. And the new culinary art using the new tools has been called molecular cuisine. Alors, je vous explique maintenant la cuisine moléculaire. Donc, gastronomie moléculaire, c'est fini. Maintenant, cuisine moléculaire. Donc, en 1980, j'ai regardé mon laboratoire, il y avait des tas d'objets. Alors, dans mon laboratoire, il n'y avait pas ça, il y avait des objets de laboratoire. Et comme je n'avais pas de casserole chez moi, j'ai utilisé les objets de laboratoire pour faire la cuisine. Et la cuisine moléculaire, c'est ça, c'est cuisiner avec des objets de laboratoire plus efficaces que des objets anciens. Alors, un exemple. Euh, alors, euh, donc voilà la définition, la cuisine moléculaire, on a des nouveaux outils. Ok, we were talking about uh, molecular cuisine and molecular cooking and molecular gastronomy. Mm. And so now, uh, I think your goal is, I don't, I don't know how to say it, promoting or developing or cuisine not by note. No, my note is to make a discovery in my lab. And why don't you tell the, us what is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I could, I, I can. <laughs> you can? Okay, note by note cooking. Okay. Yeah, so, and also if it's a, an evolution from molecular gastronomy no, 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 or no, no, it's no, a no. new thing? Forget about this thing. Uh, okay. Molecular gastronomy is developing in laboratories. It's all right. It's okay. developing, it's making bigger and bigger, it's fine. Molecular cuisine is over, it's finished, it's the past, so we forget about molecular cuisine. Perfect. Uh, it's something completely new. Okay. okay. So the idea is, uh, if you cook, you make a dish. Mm -hmm. Okay. A dish has a certain shape, has a certain consistency, has an, 
a taste mm -hmm. but when you swallow some odorant compounds are coming in your nose so mm -hmm. which has a, an odor it it can be pungent it can be fresh it can be many things okay this is a dish okay so cooking means making a dish generally you start from ingredients which are traditionally uh, vegetable fruit meat and fish or eggs and using these ingredients, you make the dish. Okay. Of course, you could play with the, the traditional ingredients, which means traditional cooking. But in, in science, we know that any ingredient, for example, a plant tissue, is made of water, cellulose, pectins, amino acid, sugar, and other pure compounds. Mm -hmm. okay. so, of course, you can start from the vegetable and the meat, but you could start from the pure compound. Okay. Like the proteins and the, the water. Prote and water, the proteins, pectin, amino acid, okay. everything. And then, node by node cooking means you forget about uh, vegetable, fruit, plant uh, tissue, uh, meat, fish, and so on. You start from pure compound. Uh, pure compound. Uh, this one is, is very odorant. This is why I keep it in the bottle. So this this is one octane three all. It's a pure compound. It has a wonderful odor of mushroom. So mm -hmm. so it's. A, and then I don't need mushrooms because I have the odor of mushroom. And the odor of mushroom will give the flavor of mushroom. So this, uh, this is an example. So, so uh, I have probably many, but uh, uh, many, for example, oh yeah, this one, what is it? This one, I don't know. And they all come from my kitchen because I, I, I have to lecture. So I took the product from my kitchen, my okay. kitchen. And there, for example, this one is, is, is carotene beta. Carotene is a, is a provitamine. Mm -hmm. It's a colorant. It's orange, as you see. You see? Oui. It's orange. orange. It's oui. a beautiful orange color. Yes. So if you if you want to make food, it has to be a color. Mm -hmm. Is a possibility. So you take a, a pinch of some, bang, it's done. So so why should we use carrot? Or it's not useless. Now another one. What about um, about this one here? Um, no, no, not this one. Here. Here are some. So you see, these bottles are uh, uh, full of, um, of, of oil okay. with a tiny quantity of an odorant compound. Mm -hmm. So the number of possibilities like this is uh, probably 10,000. Okay? So, and also uh, the combination with the concentration uh, and things. Uh, of texture. You can mix one with one, one with two, yeah. one with three, set them together. So it's very mm -hmm. simple. Um, other compounds, other interesting compounds, I don't know. Uh, let's look uh, if I find something. But you see, the, the number of compounds is, is huge uh, for making the color, the shape, the consistency, the odor, the taste, so everything. It's very simple. But you know, look at yourself, your meat. I meat, yes. Okay. And some bones, yes. Too. And bones, but uh, <laughs> the bones are not edible, so you, have, you are full of okay. meat. Yes. Okay, this meat means 25% proteins and 75% water. Yes. Okay, that's all. So if I take a spoon, one spoon of proteins, and one, two, three spoons of water, I get a mixture, I put it in a frying pan, and I get a steak, an artificial meat. Okay. The same composition. If you want to give the color, you put some red. If you want to give the, the taste, you put some amino acids uh, for taste. Free, free amino acids. Uh, free and amino some acids. small if sugar you, uh, and you get the... And, th and that's all, so okay. it's very easy. If you want to make fibers from the meat, you scratch the... Mm -hmm. the so it's very, very easy. The, the most difficult is to admit. When I proposed Not by Not Cooking in 1994, I had the feeling that I was crazy which is probably true, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I told to myself that it was too much. It was too much of a provocation. I remember very well. I remember when I wrote the paragraph, tomorrow we are going to cook note by note, uh, I said it, it, it's probably too much. But more and more with years, it appears obvious. Mm -hmm. It's obvious. And it's exactly the same as synthetic music. When you go in the street today, uh, you don't hear violins or trumpets, you hear synthetic music. So all over the world, there is synthetic music. 
tomorrow there will be synthetic food. And this synthetic food is called note by note cooking. Note by note food, let's say. Le but de la cuisine moléculaire, c'est de faire meilleur. Il hein. ne euh, faut pas faire moins bon, il faut faire toujours meilleur, parce qu'on est très gourmand. Hein. Alors, attendez, là, il faut que je... je voilà. Enfin, on a la glace, hein, ça y est. Hein. Enfin, enfin. Bon. Alors, pour ceux qui veulent faire à la maison, il faut des lunettes, très important. Et en, après, il faut un litre d'azote liquide pour un litre de sorbet hein, ou de jus de tomate. On pourrait faire... C'est quoi le, la, la boisson euh, argentine Du maté Tiens, on pourrait mettre du maté voilà. euh, T'as déjà fait du maté à, à l'azote liquide Voilà, ça, ça, ça. T'as fait déjà ça Maté à l'azote liquide Oui, oui. Non, non, mais à l'azote liquide, ça serait bien mieux. Parce qu'en plus, ça a plus de goût. Ça a beaucoup plus de goût. Alors, ben voilà, ça y est, on a la glace à l'azote liquide. Alors, ça, c'est de la cuisine moléculaire. Hein. Donc... Euh, D'habitude, je ne fais jamais en conférence ce genre d'expérience parce que je le faisais il y a 30 ans. Rappelez-vous, 1980, c'est il y a très vieux, ça. Donc ça, c'est le Moyen-Âge, déjà, presque. Donc il faut, nous, on est dans un centre scientifique pour le futur. Donc ça, on oublie, c'est passé, ça n'a plus d'intérêt. Bon. Euh, donc, donc on peut maintenant euh, commencer à réfléchir, mais puisque c'est le passé, ça va être quoi, le futur Voilà la vraie question. Comment est-ce que demain... On va pouvoir se nourrir. You were saying before that, as we were talking, that also it's a way to, um, for a more sustainable way oh, sure. of um, farm and to raise cattle and everything. Because, uh, what is your idea about that? Why is that? You know, Because you're to, we are, you, you say that it will be synthetic, but it's not really synthetic. What you were saying, it's more like uh, making the most of every everything that is farmed or raised. Now, are, I'm sticking to facts. The fact is that in developed countries, between 10 and 45 percent of food produced is spoiled. Mm -hmm. If if you um, make the extraction of the ingredients at the farm, you reduce spoilage. If you reduce spoilage, you enrich the farmers who are responsible for food security and environment. And at the same time, you produce probably safer food and you can feed a bigger number of people. So this is first important. Now look at fridge. The cold technology is not sustainable. No, it's expensive and it's, oh, uh, it's energy consuming. It's energy consuming, but also it's producing some um, 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 uh, cold um, transporting fluids and they are very bad for the climate. Okay, yeah. So today, the cold technology is not sustainable. Why do we use freezers or um, refrigerators? Because we have the tomatoes, uh, meat and so on. And these ingredients, you have to store them. But look at this kind of powders. You, I don't need a fridge. Look at sugar, for example. Sugar, you, you take a bag of sugar, you have it today, you will have it next year. So you don't need a fridge. So the big issue is that the cold technology is perhaps useless. Okay? So if you have a bag of proteins, a bag of proteins, I have one in my lab, it's a big bag full of proteins. Um, <laughs> I don't need a fridge. And then when, when you have a, a tomatoes coming to, to Buenos Aires. Okay, so we have a big truck. 10 trucks of tomatoes coming. One tomato is 95% water. water. This yes. is crazy. This truck is full of water and we transport water. It yes. is crazy. So I don't care. You do what you want. I, I'm safe. I don't sell anything. But are you going to transport water uh, for a very long time? I'm not sure. So you will have to decide. I will be dead, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will not probably be dead because uh, I see that note by note cooking is developing very fast. Okay. And if the Argentinian people don't want to be late, they have to work. Okay. Look at the grass. If you go uh, in a park in, in, in Buenos Aires, you have grass, okay. Mm -hmm. This grass is full of water, cellulose, pectins, amino acid, sugar. We could extract nutrients from the, from the grass. It is possible. So yes, we can 
feed 9 billion that we cannot cook as we cooked always. We have to change. We are not living in the Middle Age any longer. No, so we have to make this transformation. We have to educate chefs. We have to tell, educate children in, in primary school so that there is a big change, a fast change. We cannot wait for, for long. Okay. And because you said we have to make education for kids, I think that maybe for the people to do that kind of cooking at home, they will need a lot of education because yes, sure, sure. they should know what I have to take, I don't know, 50 grams of proteins a day and so to, ma to make the, the mixture as well, okay? And, but now, as it's a great problem, I think it's around the world that the children are not interested in study science. More or less, it depends on the countries. I've seen countries What? where they are interested. Okay. No, the question is not here. Where... We have it. Okay. Okay. They want to stimulate because in the. By the way, it's very important to have good scientists for any country because yeah. uh, our life is full of technology. Technology is based on science, so we need scientists and we need technologists. Yes. That's clear. Okay. Great. So, do you think that it may be uh, introducing science? through cooking in the school. Very important, I agree, it, it has to be done. And, but, but maybe f through gastronomy it's easier because it's an everyday thing. It's a... I'm not sure. You know, it, uh, uh, presenting yeah. the recipes like experiments, not yeah, like it's recipes. It's certainly useful. It will not be the, the, the whole solution. I would say that any way to make science appealing is a good way. Okay. Uh, we should not make people dream too much because some, you know, science means theory and calculation. Yes, okay. If you attract people by an experiment, you create the risk that these people would like to make experiments. Yeah, and maybe they will be... Uh, okay, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. But an experiment is not science. It's a, it's a technical activity. Mm -hmm. So I know many children that were attracted to science And then, when they realized that it was calculation, they said, oh, no, no. And, or, or they were not accepted because they were not good enough in theory. Okay. So we should not put people at the risk of being rejected. It is okay. the worst. And in, in high school, in particular, science was used as a selection tool. And it is very bad. If you are good in mathematics, okay, you go to university. If you are not good, you're rejected. It was, it was the same in many countries, and it's very bad because people are rejected by science and they don't like it. So we should create the opportunity so that people are not rejected by science. The people that are able to do some theory, computations, mm -hmm. go to science. The other do, the other do something else. And it's, we, can, we should create the condition for uh, happy life in science or outside science. N not anybody is able to do science. I, I have many okay. students coming for internship. Some people, some of them, many of them want to do science. I tell them, you will probably be a very good engineer. Don't try to be a scientist. Okay. Uh, some, I tell them, okay, you should be a scientist. You, 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 you like the, ski, the thing, you have the competency, you, you, you are on the good way. Uh, but you know, when someone, uh, imagine that so, I, I've seen the case, someone coming, having absolutely no skill in mathematics and saying, I want to be a scientist. I say, a guy, okay, but you're late by 20 years. So, uh, okay, you make a big effort, but you, you will be late by 20 years. Yes. But coming to the question of um, science through cooking, why is it good? It's good not because you attract children for science. It's good because instead of just doing something like a machine, you, you make your brain work. Yes. And then you ask questions. You, you have a souffle that expands. Why? You, are, you know, the, the big success of science was to fight against um, devils. You know, in the old times, when imagine that there was a big, uh, a big storm, people were thinking, oh, the gods are angry. Okay. And suddenly, science explained the storm. So now we know that there is no devil making the storm. We know that there are natural phenomena, mechanisms, and we, we, we have the, the, the faith that we can 
understand. This is the, 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 the question of science, the, the big question of science. So when you cook, so instead of having a miracle in your plate, you understand something, you control it better, mm -hmm. and then you can decide. You know, the worst is when you cannot decide. Thank you very much for okay. your visit. Uh, I hope you enjoy Buenos Aires and the meat and the asado and everything. Very uh, very <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you enjoy the, the interview. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.